So I'm going to talk about some new therapies coming out. We talked about uh, artificial intelligence this morning. This is one that I'm also a primary investigator on. This was FDA approved in June of this year. It's a motorized articulated 1064 nan uh, nanometer laser delivery arm. And we know that 1064 gets rid of fat, but what's neat about this device is it's a repeatable, accurate motion of the treatment head. Again, it's using technology to get a, an efficacious result. It maintains uniform distance from the skin, but the real money in the patent for this was the jet impingement cooling. It's literally a technology that's uh, used for cooling planes and other things. But if you look at the data, it's pretty impressive. If you get a 0.3.4 millimeter reduction in fat. This was a study done by Susie Kilmer, myself, and Tom Fiala. And there was a 15.1% reduction of fat. This is on par with cool sculpting. And now they're even optimizing the heat further because the cooling can protect the skin. There's no gel, there's no downtime. And last technology I'm going to talk about, I, I'm really excited about dermal microcoring. This was inspired by fractional ablative lasers and punch biopsies by dermatologists. So you take out little micro cores of skin, and then you get a, a biomechanical remodeling immediately. I've done OCT studies showing that the skin contracts. This truly, in my opinion, is the first skin tightening, skin laxity device that, that truly does that word. We could get into a long discussion about that. It's made so that there are no scarring. There have met, never been any scarring. Um, it's mechanical only. There's no energy. There's not a laser. It's quantitative and directional reduction in the area of skin, wrinkle improvement, tightening, smooth of skin. And so this is a video of it. I call it the human sewing machine. You can see it takes out little cores of skin. When we first started out, we were doing about 2,000 micro cores. That was about three years ago. This is the phase three trial. We'll finish the last round next week in my practice. There's four of us doing that phase three. We're doing 14,000 micro cores. It takes about 20 minutes. You can tune the density. You can tune the depth. There's 48 hours of post-operative petrolatum. And this is that patient 16 hours after the procedure. She came in the next morning. There's essentially no no downtime with this procedure. So pigmentation has been one of the great enigmas that we've all tried to find the absolute cure, it's sort of like with acne with technologies as well. And these are some of the, again, approaches or targets that we've had, topicals, peels, lasers, and light devices. I think that combination treatments, like in many other instances, are really the way to go. But I do think we've made some major advances. So for me, in my thinking, the major advances have been that technologies that are non-thermal, that don't induce heating, that don't have rebound inflammatory response are really the best way to eradicate melanocytes. So what I've found in terms of our treatment protocols or three treatments at a month apart, again, utilizing the parameters that I have here, have really been the best in all skin types, skin type one through six. And again, treating melasma in darker skin phenotypes has been a major issue. But again, the picosecond laser with its non-thermal mechanism has been something that I've been able to use in a variety of skin types as seen here. So I think in conclusion, again, that this really is a major breakthrough in terms of treatment of melasma. And again, be thinking of both focal and global treatment of pigmentation, whether it's both from inflammatory melasma or if it's from photoaging as well, that combination approach really works well. You know, if you don't have something that to invent, even if you're not spending 100 grand or 200 grand every quarter, you have to have something to, new to show your patients. But what I'm finding I'm liking a lot of this year is patients who fail radio frequency or even, you know, the halo or some of the hybrid lasers. I'm finding that I'm getting nice results on the sort of the area right above the trachea there. In, in this patient, she's actually extended in the first picture, and she's not in the second picture, but you can still see that superficial loose skin is better. And I never thought Altera would do that. And so if you use the orange or green transponders for that part of the neck, without, if they've failed radio frequency, I'm finding that I'm getting really nice results with that. She couldn't afford Kybella, so I tried radio frequency, and I got a wonderful result, and this is three years later, and it's just one treatment. And she's thin, but it's also something to consider, because I would have first gone to something else, and so I tried RF, and it did a really nice job, so it was loose skin. There are a lot of patients for whom what looks like melasma is really just an inflammatory photo damage. And so those people, it's not great to do NDAG for them. It's really great to do Erbium Fraxel or Fraxel Clear and Brilliant. But what I like to do with my Fraxel cases is, as particularly with people like this, 
is they'll actually do the cystamine bleaching cream every four hours while awake for the 24-hour period while they're healing from their Fraxel. And they get phenomenal results that really persist. So I love doing drug delivery with cystamine, Fraxel, maybe photo damage, maybe a little melasma, maybe a little combination. And these are the three advances you have to know in cosmetic dermatology and in lasers in the last year, the last two years. The number one is that combinations are still best because there isn't one laser that can do everything for you. The second big breakthrough has been the non-ablative erbium yag tissue tightening that's come about. The third one is the picosecond lasers are here and they are good. And the last one is one that's going to blow the stuff off the laser industry in the next couple of years, and it's 3D printing. Everybody hang onto their hats with that, because it's going to change and revolutionize everything quickly. But what we need is multiple tools, and we need them at a cost-effective price. A 3D printer can take a laser and reprint every part of it, and then it can be put back together. So instead of a laser costing $150,000 to $200,000, it'll cost $10,000. Now the most important part of using a laser is not the laser, it's the doctor that uses it. So even important as the barrier to entry is to tell people about your credentials and how important it is you know how to use that instrument. But there are companies right now 3D printing lasers and they are on their way.